So we've had a bit of a look and a bit of a talk about regular titration and the calculations associated with that process. And so now we're going to have a little bit of a chat about back titration. So back titration is slightly more complex than regular titration. However, it's pretty easy once you get the grasp of it. So let's just say that I've got my, I've got a sample of a very weak acid. Okay, it's a very weak acid. Okay, and I've got this sample here. It's, we'll say that it's in solid form, and it's impure. So I can't just kind of weigh it and figure out how many mole I've got of this very weak acid. You know, I've got. I want to find out how much of this very weak acid is in this sample. This sample, this this impure sample that contains, you know, other substances in it. So we'll say very weak acid, and it's impure. Now. I could titrate this very this this very weak acid. I could make this into a solution and titrate it with a strong acid, as we as we would have done with regular titration. However, I've worked out that if I'm going to do that, if I'm going to titrate this very weak acid with a strong base, then the pH curve is going to look a little something like this. So we know that. So the pH curve is going to sort of look a little bit, a little something like this, okay? So as I add this weak acid, if I make a solution of weak acid, put it in a burette, and drop it into a strong base, okay, this is going to be the pH of the solution in the flask, okay? So it kind of gradually decreases as this solution becomes more acidic. However, it doesn't really have any sharp point at which it decreases. So if I was to choose an indicator, say say the equivalence point is around here. Say the equivalence point of the reaction is around there. Then no matter what indica indicator I choose, I'm probably going to have uh, an end point through this region. Okay. So this say say this is the range of pHs over which the color of my indicator is going to change. Okay. This is the range of pHs. Then that means there's a very broad gap this way as to the it's going to take a lot of acid to be added from here to here for the color to change completely, okay? Because we need to move from this pH to this pH for the indicator to change color completely. And therefore, we need to move from here to here in terms of the volume of acid added. So that's a big difference in the amount of acid that we're adding. There's no really specific sort of, there's no specific end point when we're using this weak acid, okay? This acid is so weak that there is no clear end point. All right, so we're going to have to look for a different way to find out the number of mole of acid that we've got in this impure sample. So acid is so weak that the end point is quite vague, okay? It's quite, it's quite gradual, we'll say. And so, as I said, we're going to have to look for a different way to do this, and that is where back titration comes in. So we've got this impure sample of a very weak acid and we want to know how many moles of this very weak acid are in the impure sample. Okay. So first thing that we can do is put this very weak acid into a solution. So we've got this conical flask here. So we're adding this very weak acid to a solution of a strong base. an excess of strong base. So we, we you know we know what this very weak acid is and we, we can have a rough idea of you know the general region over over which you know the amount of acid oh, we have a general idea of the amount of acid that could be in the sample. And so in this conical flask we have an excess. We ensure that we have enough strong base in this conical flask that uh, the strong base will be in excess of the very weak acid. <clears throat> okay, and so when we add the very weak acid to the conical flask containing the strong base, we shake it up, we react it, we react away all of the very weak acid, and there's some strong base left over. Because it's in excess, there's, there's some strong base left over in this. Okay, so we've got some strong base left over in here. Obviously, there's going to be a lot less because a lot of the strong base has reacted with the very weak acid here. However, there's going to be some left over due to the fact that the, the strong base is in excess. And so, with this strong base that's left over, 
what we're going to do is titrate this this solution. Okay, we've added the very weak acid to the strong base. We've we've allowed the reaction to go to completion, and then we've uh, then we're going to titrate the remaining solution. We're not going to we're not going to do any we're not going to make any changes, and we're going to react. We're going to titrate a strong base. <coughs> Sorry, a strong acid with the leftover strong base. And so, just like in a regular titration, we've got a strong acid and a strong base. We can work out the volume of the strong acid. We know that we're going to make sure that both of these solutions are standard. So, we know their concentration to you know a high degree of accuracy. So we're titrating this, these standard solutions. Okay. So this is a standard solution. Before we've added the very weak acid, this is a standard solution of a strong base. Once we've added it, we, this is no longer a standard solution. Because we've reacted away an amount of the strong base. We don't know how much of it we've reacted away, but we've reacted away some amount of it. And so this one here is not a standard solution. But we've got a strong standard solution, strong standard acid, up here. So we titrate this with this. We titrate the strong acid with the strong with the leftover strong base. And so, by work, once we finish the titration, we we come up with a volume of acid. And because it's standardized, we know its concentration. We can use this to get the mole of acid that we've reacted the mole of acid that's been released from the burette that's been released from the burette into the conical flask so we can work out the mole of acid from there we know the react we could work out the chemical equation between the strong acid and the strong base that's in here and so we can use that to work out the mole of strong base that's left over just make a little bit more room here so from there we can work out the mole of the strong base that's left over. And so this is where the sort of the idea of back titration comes into it. So we've done a regular titration up to this point. You know, we've tied it, we've titrated the strong acid and the strong base to work out the amount of strong base in this conical flask down here, which we've got there. And now we want to work out the number of moles that we have of the very weak acid. Now what's important here is that not only is this a standard solution, as I've drawn quite roughly here, so I'll make this a little bit clearer. So this is a standard solution. And what else is important is that we know it's of the exact volume. So it's a standard solution and we know it's exact volume before we've added the very weak acid. So because it's a standard solution and we know the exact volume, we can work out the mole of strong base that we started with in this conical flask. So we can work that out here. And so we know we now know the amount of the strong base that was left over after it reacted with the very weak acid, and we know the amount of the strong base that we had before anything had reacted with the very weak acid. And so by subtracting this value from this value, so we call if we call this N2 and we call this N1, then N reacted. So this is the number of mole of, so this here, the number of mole of strong base that reacted with the very weak acid is going to be given by N1 minus N2. 
two. Okay, so we started with this amount. We ended up with this amount. So the amount that disappeared is going to be this amount minus this amount, or N1 minus N2. All right? And so, I'll just underline this in red. That's kind of key here. So the mole, that, the mole of strong base that reacted with the very weak acid is given by N1 minus N2. And now, given that we know the formula of the very weak acid, it's impure, but we know that there is, we know what the kind of, we know what the very weak acid is that's in this impure sample. We can work out the chemical equation for the reaction between the very weak acid and this strong base here. And then, using stoichiometry, we've, we know the amount of strong base that's reacted, and therefore we can work out the amount of weak acid that's reacted. And that amount of weak acid that's reacted is going to equal the amount of weak acid in the sample. Okay, all of the weak acid in the sample has reacted. So if, from the mole of, by knowing the mole of strong base that's reacted, we can work out the mole of weak acid that's reacted. And that mole of weak acid that's reacted is all of the weak acid. So the mole of weak acid can be obtained quite simply from the chemical equation in conjunction with this equation here. So, we can't titrate a very weak acid directly, some very weak acids, directly with a strong base because the end, the end point here is quite gradual. The pH change is quite gradual and so it's hard, to, it's hard for us to identify, uh, using colour change, uh, the exact end point, or the exact equivalence point, sorry, of a titration of a very weak acid with a strong base. Because of this gradual change, none of the indicators will have a sudden change. They'll all change gradually. And so we won't have a very precise figure for the volume of, uh, volume of base that we've reacted with this weak acid solution. So instead of, instead of doing a direct titration, we do a back titration. We react all of our, all of, all of our, all of our very weak acid with a very strong base until it's all gone, and we've only got some strong base left over. We titrate that leftover strong base with a strong acid, and from that, if the strong acid is standardized, then we know then we can work out the mole of acid from the volume of acid, okay? Because this is equal to C times V. So we know we know the volume of acid, and because it's a standard solution, we know the concentration. So we can using N equals C times V, we can work out the number of moles of the strong acid that we that have reacted in this titration. From there, we can figure out the number of moles of strong base that were in this solution here, so the number of moles of strong base that were left over. If this if we started with a standard solution, a standardized strong base, and we knew the exact volume of it, then we can figure out the the mole of the strong base that we had at the start. Now the difference between these two things is going to be the amount of uh, the number of moles of strong base that reacted away in the reaction between the very weak acid and the strong base. Here. So the amount of the amount of the strong base that's reacted away can be calculated by the difference between the amount of strong base here and the amount of strong base that we started with. And so that amount that's reacted can then be used to find out the amount of weak acid that was added to the strong base. Okay, and so this is what we're trying to work out. This is our final result. And I'll, I'll sort of go through an example with some numbers in another video.